Hey everybody, got a, another one today. I am going to build some lamp timer chips for one of the lamps I deal with. I actually just picked this thing up the other day. It's an air-driven solder pump for solder paste or glue or whatever. You use, you know, a syringe fill it with whatever then that plug goes in and then this is hooked up to an air compressor and you can either run it off the foot pedal or I prefer to use this button right here and it sends out a meter to mount onto the PCB you can see I did all these these are actually finished so I'm actually put these out of the way They still need their fingers put on them, but the chips are soldered on. These are the next ones. Right here. In fact, let me, uh, I'm going to move you guys to a better vantage point so you can see what I'm going to do. Now I have them all lined up on this uh, fireproof material. Then I'm going to take this with the solder paste in there, and I have this set to a meter to mount. So all I have to do... Let's see, I'll start on this one. As I line up the tip with the pad, I push the button, and then it puts out a little bit of air, enough to squeeze out some paste. You can see there is an air bubble in the syringe, but that's fine. And I worked out that this is just enough. I have it set to number five on the time, I don't think that's five seconds. I don't think those numbers actually match anything other than, um, you know, an arbitrary setting. There we go. You can see I just go to spot to spot. And it blurps out, so click. I'm going to turn up the pressure just a little bit. Let's get a little more. I'm run the time just a tiny bit more. There we go. Yeah, see, that's I'm still running into it sticking. I clean these boards off with uh, alcohol first, but sometimes that still doesn't quite get them clean. And I got that air bubble in the solder paste. I need to make an adapter for this so that I can use the uh, syringes that the paste comes in. <clears throat> or, actually no, I take that back. I need to buy a tub of solder paste and just load a syringe instead of buying it in the syringe and dumping it in here because that's probably how I got that air bubble. But regardless, this is working. It works really well. I'm really happy with, uh, with this. I used to have to do it by hand, which meant manipulating this amount of solder out of a syringe and having to retract the syringe to keep it from over dispensing. Now this thing can be used for glue, uh, pastes, anything really, any type of material you can put in here. And let me uh, zoom you back out. So the way this all comes apart when you're finished is the sleeve slides off like that and it's just plugged in. It's nothing fancy. This is just a switch. And then this, you can see it. Let me hold it so you can keep it in frame. Like that. Come on. There we go. I overturned it. So you get the idea. Now, what I should do is probably get that air bubble out. But eh, I'll just get more paste and make a new syringe. Slide that back on, and then I wrap the wire around it, and you can see I just... Actually, it's kind of cool. Watch the piston. Ready? And it 
blurps that out. So this thing's pretty sweet. Now that's finished. Let's turn that off. And spin these back around a little bit and push this whole thing back. And let me get the chips. Rearrange the camera a little. And let's get 10 chips ready. Now these I will still have to program. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I still will have to program these. But once I get this all done, the programming is pretty straightforward. And the way they go on is they're keyed. You know, the little pin, little mark marks pin one. So I'm going to place all these. I uh, could use my suction cup thingy but these work just fine and by suction cup thingy I mean this you know for picking them up I think I need a smaller tip yeah this tip pulls off and you can put different tips on it This is my old one. Let's see if this one works. Oh yeah. So you get the idea. I can pick it up. Oops. Get a little bit of suction on it. Pick it up. Get it lined up right. My hand in the right spot. Set it down and then release it. Now I think, yeah. I'm going to put that on here. And now I'll see if it works. Yeah, it's not going on the end very well. It's probably a little too big. And this is older. I actually might be, be able to use that dispensing machine for this. It does have a vacuum function. Uh, I forgot how well this little chintzy one worked. Uh, let me flip these chips over. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. But I kind of like it. Some people don't like surface mount, but I thoroughly enjoy it. Oops. Until you do something stupid like that. Got to get my rhythm back down for the inflate and deflate. For the pick up and drop off. Alright, and then there's the last one. Yeah, see, I still think tweezers are easier for these. Because then I can line them up and kind of pop them into the, the paste a little better. And there we go. All right. And let's get the uh, soldering iron, or the, uh, the hot air gun. It's nothing fancy, just a, uh, I don't know how you say that, AO, AU, IU, but uh, good price and it works really well. It gets up to temperature really fast. The solder melts at 250, so I'm going to run a little over 250. I'm going to run at 280, and that should melt quick enough. I don't want to cook the boards. 
It's easy to do with hot air to overheat them. All right, let's see, 265, 280. All right. Hopefully you can see that solder melt. I'll zoom in after I get this started, and I know it's up to temperature. There we go. Actually, that air is a little high. Turn it down a little. Yeah, let's zoom in so that you can kind of see it better. Let's focus, yeah. So I could tell the air was too high because it was pushing the chip. I don't want to push the chip. I just want the solder to melt. And then the surface tension pulls the chip into position. And using that meter dispenser really makes this work a lot better because I have equal amounts of solder everywhere so the timing and temperature stays constant across the finishing. I don't end up with any extra solder balls or loose bits. It's nice. Hopefully you can see on that one that it was crooked and then after I got the solder to melt it pulled it into position. And we're on the last one. Again, there's only a batch of 10. I build them about 10 or 20 at a time depending on how many we need for inventory. There we go. That's really all there is to it. These are a little hot. It's pretty cool. I designed the board. It's really just a clone of the original board. I simplified it a little for manufacturing. I only did a single-sided. I didn't do double-sided. It doesn't matter. These are using a uh, one-wire Dallas, one-wire microchip protocol to talk to these chips to store runtime on lamps. So, yeah, that's how I uh, put those chips together. I'm going to go program them and then uh, send them down to assembly. Thanks for watching.